This video is for Dixie D'Amelio. If you are not Dixie, please keep on scrolling. So the first question I wanted to ask was, uh, I do have a crush on you, and I just wanted to ask you out uh, on a date or something. I got another one for the girls. How about no ministration March? You cannot ministrate in the month of March. Is this a good idea? Hey man, it's fine. I did kiss a nine-year-old. The one that kisses nine-year-olds, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about him. Um, yeah. What's what's up with him? I mean, he's like low-key weird, you know. Uh, who who would do such a thing? Hello everybody, and today we have a very wacky thing to talk about. Today's topic is going to be discussing a man by the name of Brandon Herr Berlin. Brandon's very first piece of internet fame or internet clout came from when he made a video that was dedicated towards Charlie D'Amelio's sister, Dixie D'Amelio, and he asked her on a date and asked her even a few other questions on how to get famous on TikTok. That Shortly after that creepy ass date proposal started losing its recognition and he started becoming extremely irrelevant, he started making terrible jokes that were related to the funny meme called No Nut November. Brandon's jokes weren't really jokes, they were just really creepy things he would say into the camera and then he would bite his lips as if he was attractive at all. One of the jokes that he would reuse quite a bit would be, what if the girls, instead of No Nut November, they would do No Discharge December. Brandon was allegedly talking to and dating a 12-year-old girl when he was 18 years old. He also admitted to kissing a 9-year-old girl. Shortly after that, he went on to have a complete mental breakdown on a live. Not only that, Brandon would then go on to joke about the entire situation, even comparing himself to EDP, saying that if he was forgiven and still out on the platform, then I should be too. Like I said, we have a decent amount of stuff to cover today, so everybody strap in, buckle in, and get ready for the ride. The very first thing that I'm going to be showing you is his date proposal to Dixie D'Amelio, and the first thing that you'll notice while watching this is why does it look like he's in an interrogation room or a secret chamber in his basement? This video is for Dixie D'Amelio. If you are not Dixie, please keep on scrolling. Okay, hi. Dixie, uh, my name is Brandon. We've never met. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions, if you don't mind. So the first question I wanted to ask was, uh, I do have a crush on you, and I just wanted to ask you out uh, on a date or something, or maybe we can meet, hang out. I'll be flying to Los Angeles soon, so uh, maybe we can meet there, if you don't mind. I mean, it's okay if you say no, I'm not pressuring you, just give it some thought. And the second question I had was, uh, how did you get popular on TikTok in the first place, besides your sister? I know you created a song not too long called uh, Be Happy and One Whole Day. I just wanted to know your tips. Thank you for watching, and I hope you see this video. Thank you. I got another one for the girls. How about no ministration March? You cannot ministrate in the month of March. Is this a good idea? Like I said, a very creepy and unsettling shit that you just had to witness right there, but that's when things started to go downhill when people started accusing him of being a child predator. Once Brandon was aware of the situation and it all started to get much worse and worse, he would get threats on the daily and people would always be talking down on him in his comment section, that's when he started to kind of go off the edge. Then Brandon would then go on to be on an Instagram live, he would admit to kissing a 9 year old girl, and then he would even go on to mock the entire situation in a little comedy skit that I guess he thought was funny. Now I'm going to show you two things. The first thing is going to be like 10 seconds of an admission of guilt from him where he does say that he did kiss a 9 year old girl when he was around the age of 18 years old. The second thing that I'm going to show you is the very disgusting skit that he made on TikTok afterwards that he thought was funny or comedy. Hey man, it's fine! I did kiss a 9 year old! The one that kisses 9 year olds, right? Oh yeah, 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 I've heard about him. Um... Yeah, what's, what's up with him? I mean, he's like low-key weird, you know? Uh, who, who would do such a thing? Exactly, bro, who would do such a thing? Low-key? I don't care. Some, some stupid things that, uh, A, I'd probably be arrested for, and B, I probably deserve what is being uh, told to me and stuff. 
but um, I'm just here to let you know that ever since what happened back in 2020, I have kept myself clean. I have... Uh, now the next thing that I am going to show you here is when Brandon was on a TikTok live after all of these events transpired and he turned off all the comments on his videos because of the overwhelming amount of hate he got, he went on the live to talk about the entire situation. Now in this live here you're going to see him divert blame a little bit but also take responsibility for it a little bit. Not only that, you'll see him compare himself to people like EDP and Logan Paul and say that he thinks that since other people were forgiven for what he did, he should also be forgiven for what he's done. Now in my opinion, he should not be forgiven for what he's done. In no way, shape, or form should he have ever done something like that in the first place, especially when he was a grown-ass man at the age of 18 years old. And secondly, I don't think he should be allowed on the app, especially an app like TikTok, which is primarily made for children to scroll on, and then him just being allowed on it in no way, shape, or form should he or EDP be allowed on it. I think it's absolutely disgusting that they could be allowed on it at all. It was years ago. Literally, people have forgiven all these other creators, but yet you can't to me when it's been two, four years ago. Uh, I expect you respect me the same way you respect them and honestly i'm gonna be honest i don't fucking care anymore because i'm gonna say this once and i i i'm done i'm gonna keep posting on here y'all can do whatever you want with your lives i don't care what you comment but from now on i'm gonna stay public i'm gonna keep posting i'm gonna turn my comments on not have any filters y'all can say the amount of shit that you want to and, uh, yeah, so, um, all in all, you need to shut go literally any more comments on their pages explaining what happened to uh, their allegations. Uh, EDP doesn't, I'm, I think EDP is still on TikTok, by the way. I've seen his account pop up on my For You page multiple times. So EDP, y'all didn't get rid of EDP. He's still on TikTok roaming around making videos. He's got his comments turned off. Well, actually, yeah, he's got his comments turned off, but he doesn't have his comments turned off on Instagram. I see a lot of uh, the comments on his Instagram, but he does, doesn't give a shit anymore. He's not living in a 4x4 jail cell. He's actually very much still living his life. He's probably got a job on top of that. He's also still somewhat has a career. And before I mention anything else, I just want to let you know that there are also multiple creators out there that have not done the similar thing that has been forgiven. I'm not going to compare myself to them, but I will give examples. For example, Logan Paul back in 2018, he made that stupid uh, video in the forest. Here he is four, four years later boxing Floyd Mayweather literally started his own drinking company prime and literally has a podcast that has over 4 million subscribers literally james charles he he took a break for like two months uh amidst the allegations he came back he's still doing good still earning money uh still fucking grinding all, uh literally videos all day so i'm going to tell you this and i'm going to tell you this right now if those creators can change and they have showed they changed, and I have too in the last couple of years. That means y'all need to shut the fuck up, let it go, leave it alone, leave it in the past, sealed and buried. It should not be brought up again. Now, I hate to interrupt the video. You know that's one of the things that I just hate to do. But when he's sitting here spatting shit out of his ass talking about how, you know, they can change in those years and whatnot. Whenever this stuff was brought to light, Brandon, how you handled it was extremely disgusting. Screaming and ranting about it on a live, making a skit of the situation and acting as if it's funny shows me that you've had no growth and you don't know how to handle this situation, nor do you know how to take accountability, especially in this live as when you showed me that you only know how to divert the blame. Brandon Heberlin was ultimately banned on TikTok and he was arrested for three different things. I'm going to show you a clip of someone discussing it further and telling you what he was arrested for. Now I do need to tell you this, he was banned on TikTok but he is trying to resurface. Just a few days ago I saw the new account he made and I don't know if it got banned or not but I can't seem to find it anymore.
So I'm just going to give you guys a warning here. He is trying to make new accounts on TikTok from what I have seen. So please be careful whenever you're just roaming around the site, especially if you have children, monitor what they're doing on that app because that app is extremely, extremely dangerous, although it looks harmless from the surface. This video is for Lauren Gray. If you're not Lauren Gray, please keep on scrolling. No, I suggest you stay right the fuck here. Here's a reminder of who that person in the video clip was. This man is Brandon Heberlin. He is 20 years old, 5'7", and weighs 240 pounds. He was arrested on July 31st by the Eastern Kentucky Police Department. He was charged with fourth degree assault, third degree sexual abuse, and second degree unlawful imprisonment. He was initially enrolled in Eastern Kentucky University, but dropped out due to the allegations. He has allegedly sexually assaulted one female. As of this point, the victim wishes to remain anonymous, so I can neither confirm nor deny what her age is. As of recently, he's living in Louisville, Kentucky. Now that is all there is to talk about today. I just wanted to inform you guys of a situation, especially since I saw him resurface. I thought it would be a good idea to bring it back up and re-talk about what this guy has done in the past. Now, I haven't seen anybody talk about this Brandon guy in about two years, so I just wanted to make sure that if he is trying to resurface or regain any type of popularity he used to have, people would be informed of the situation and kind of to steer away from his direction. That is all I have to talk about today, so I hope everybody watching this video had a damn good day or is going to have a really good day or a really great night, and I will see you guys on the next video. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys.